with like, okay, I, I can't just like copy this music from 1927. That's not true to me. It's not really fair to the people that did it better. Um, I would have to work really hard to get to that level anyway. But I did feel like if you take some of the past and mix it with a little bit of the present and like me and my own past, it's a future. It's a different and a new thing. And you know, that's what I try and do and that kind of gets back to like what folk music is. Is like I remember the first line I was like, can I put if if I lose, let me lose in here? Like I've heard that and all and I'm like, Yeah, you've heard it in like five different folk songs at least, which means it's fair game, you know, on, on the other hand. It's really cool to sort of be able to put in little tiny bits of whether it's like a line, you know, like that, that's just, you've, you've heard it a lot around, or just references to things that are old in, in a song that sounds modern is kind of like the balance I'm going for with some of that, or like the song sounds old, but then the lyrical content might be a little bit untraditional is, is what I'm going for. Yeah, I think that's how you tie into like the collective consciousness when, you're, when you have that mix. Yeah, because I mean, there's nothing new under the sun, like, you know, there's just the 2020 archetype of the broken heart or the whatever it is. And so speaking to that in a mix of like my terminology and terminology from other ages is, is one of my favorite things to do. Sometimes I lose, sometimes I win. I'm gonna make myself be again. I was used to writing about myself and things that were going on inside and or in relationships with other people, whether they're romantic or platonic or just whoever it may be. Um, so I felt like I had done that and in the same way in my real life that I was like settling in a place, I wanted to kind of settle in myself too. And that's like, you know, you guys are my therapist right now. Like that's, the, like that's partly what I'm working towards as a human being, but like as a musician, I wanted to distill down a lot of the stuff I'd been absorbing for the last four years into something that felt as raw as my first ever EP, but was incorporating all these new things I've learned in the seven years since, or five years since then. And because, you know, I don't know, so many of my favorite rock bands, you hear the same thing, right? Like their first album's great, and then they got soft. And I was like, I think there's growth in almost any artist and that will account for changing of, of, you know, nuances in the music. And I'm not concerned with being soft or hard, but I wanted to just strip stuff down a little bit and bring it like back to a place of like, does this song rock or is there a bunch of awesome playing on it? It can be both, like especially here in Nashville. And I'd like to think on my last record there was both. But I really wanted to be like, okay, but what if I don't have like pedal steel and fiddle from some of the best people in Nashville and it's just this song with like a good tone and like good, you know, John O'Ricks, who's like the Wood Brothers drummer, like one of the better drummers I could ask for ever. Is like you said, is it gonna stick or is it gonna fall over? Like there are a few songs that like just 90 sounding rock songs on there that I'm like, if we don't rock this, it's lame. Like this isn't a song that I can play on my acoustic guitar and it will have the same effect. And then there's other stuff for like, as you heard this just slide or you know, my baritone guitar, just different texture things. But a few of those were nerve wracking for me too. So I'm glad to hear that you are liking it and I hope you're not just being nice because some of that stuff I'm just like, I wanted to not think about how it would be received or categorized and just try and write songs that I was really proud of and put them on a record. Consequences aside, they've been hard to tell apart.
Once in our household did we play anything from like 1920s blues stuff. I mean, that just wasn't really the conversation musically. My dad brought a lot of other music, and so did my mom, both from the 80s and before. But that turn, like pre-war stuff, was not. And bluegrass also was really not. We had he had one Bill Monroe record, which I now ended up with. But I don't think we ever played that in our house ever. It was a lot of Rolling Stones and Dire Straits and Aerosmith and. Nirvana when they got big, and then I, you know, was old enough to sort of just pursue rock and indie and these things. Songwriters, Elliot Smith and Bonnie Vare, like people that are such a far away world. And then in other ways, it came full circle. Like I was really into the Black Keys, and when I discovered Junior Kimbrough after that, I was like, oh, this is exactly the same thing, <laughs> like just modern, you know. Um, that it's been, you know, this is where they're getting that sound from. And that was a really cool moment for me. So I feel like it's shown that I always have been drawn to that kind of like bluesy, but like rock. I love rock. I love something that it kind of hits hard. And I think what astounded me about the Delta stuff is that without drums, without band, without even amplification, like someone like Blind Willie Johnson, it just like hit me in a similar place. And I, I don't really know how to answer that question because it's such a personal and nebulous thing. Like it affected me deeply in the way that certain songs sit with you or you differently. And um, I like got there through other people. I got there through Led Zeppelin doing a blind release, you know, in my time of dying. And I heard Rory Block doing Skip James and John Hurt. And they are great. But when I heard the like original stuff, I was just like, Got news for you. Got news for you. Got news for you. Throw my head down to my shoe. Usually, I build a song off of a riff for sure. And if not, before that, it, it would be like chord sequences. I, I'm definitely a music first kind of writer. And I was also really fascinated when I was first getting into the blues about some of that, especially the hill country stuff, where like I have one song on the record that is kind of my stab at a hill country vibe, because I it's very hard to do, and it's like taken me all this time after hearing it to even get close to being like, oh, I think I could kind of write in this style and, and like feel inspired from it. Um, and weirdly, you would think it's the genre in in the blues that I would have gravitated to immediately because it's like rocked out and you can play, you know, R.L. Burnside stuff in his later life, he had like a full band with drums and bass and they fucking rocked, sorry for the F word. But it, 
you know, I was so interested in like what one person with their one guitar could do for a while that like getting to that point was pretty tricky. And I was also really interested in like, can you write a riff so good that like you said, it becomes hypnotic and you don't need a bridge and all this stuff that I had been so used to putting into my music. So that's, I think, also where some of that rawness is coming from in this record is trying to be like, I mean, there's a lot of blues songs where there's no chorus, and it's just a really cool riff and a lot of verses, you know? And could I write something like that? It was sort of, sort of in my mind for a lot of that. <laughs> to the vibe. Yeah. You're in my house. Well, have you read uh, the Emily Dickinson poem? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is some Kafkaesque shit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 